What's up? EJK here. Gonna do a vid on, or I should say VOD. Vid is not a word. Between Hurricane and Innovation on Deadwing. It's a TVP macro game, and if I had to sum it up in a couple of points, macro game, comeback game, late game TVP. Sounds good enough. And of course, it is a late game, so we're going to be able to see a lot of analysis that I'm sure these commentators that went right over their heads, not because they're bad at their job, but because these are things that you have to watch the VOD multiple times for in order to actually see these things happen. I, I personally had to rewatch parts of the VOD to make sense of things before actually uh, recording this so that I could get a better idea of what to say. So commentators calling things on the spot can be pretty challenging. So we have Innovation going for a Reaper expand. We have Hurricane going for a very standard one gate Mothership Core expand. Now both players are choosing to open up economically. There's not going to be a lot going on until about the five minute mark. Uh, I guess this gives me a little bit of time to talk about uh, I guess like the amount of videos I'll be able to output since school is starting up I'm not gonna have a lot of time because I'm a full-time student to keep producing like one video a day like I used to do that's just not a realistic goal anymore and I was originally thinking uh, I would have a donation thing on my stream and every time I reached fifty dollars I would release a new video and that way I wouldn't I wouldn't be making as many videos and I'd be getting something out of it but after having that for about a day I streamed a little bit last night Monday nights I stream uh, with that as a donation goal I just didn't like it I like to do these videos to help other players learn about the game to reveal things that make the game like understanding why these pro gamers play eight to ten hours a day every day and devote a very large portion of their short lives to becoming the best at this game and I think it gives them injustice if these small details aren't noticed and appreciated by us spectators watching them perform. So this is I guess my community service to the community. It's not something that I'm going to be putting on a resume but I do intend to just produce videos as often as possible especially when there are good games going on. Innovation versus Hurricane. I went to eSports TV on YouTube. This was the first thing that popped up and I was like oh well this is going to be a good game and then I see the time and it's like oh well there's no way that this is going to be a bad game alright so it's about the five minute mark I've rambled on for long enough Innovation is opening up for a Widow Mind drop we've seen him do this recently in Pro League and uh, in his recent GSL matches against Super he did it in one game and what ends up happening here is that he opens up Reaper Expand and then he gets a factory he has a bunch of Marines in the medevac blah 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 he drops on different maps he will uh, he'll send six marines to the natural if he scouts that there's no uh, fast oracle in this case it's too it's the map's too large to send the six marines across so he tried to sack the reaper he didn't get anything he's still going for the drop anyways because he sees that there are two stalkers out fairly fast in the mothership core so that there is most likely I believe with a oracle build you get it after the first stalker starts not after like the second so it would be delayed if he got two stalkers and then a stargate so I think that gives innovation enough confidence to send a drop across the map of course he ends up scouting this pylon the drop goes right right over it he doesn't have a bunker up which is very very ambitious of him if uh, Hurricane had done a three gate opener, like Mothership Corps ban into three gates without blink. 
and attack now, Innovation would have taken very heavy losses, not having that bunker up. But it's a very metagame-esque thing. Instead, Hurricane is going to uh, quote-unquote metagame Innovation in a different way. This is definitely a playstyle that Innovation has shown multiple times, so there are resources and VODs for Hurricane to study, to practice it with his teammates. That would have mine uh, doing a decent amount of damage, killing that mothership core, very important at this stage of the game because now it means that Hurricane can no longer blink up into the net, into the main base until that observer gets across the map. And usually the observer is about ready to allow the blink stalkers to jump up with this build at about the nine minute mark. So it gives innovation a lot of time. Now one thing that I've noticed he does on a consistent basis with these medevac drops and off of this opener is that he will make like two to three medevacs. I'm not sure what prompts him to make more or less medevacs. And there are games where it's, he seemingly doesn't do any damage at all. Like right here, he's done absolutely no damage. That would have mind not even killing a single probe. Hurricane is, I wouldn't say he's up in supply, or he's ahead by any means because of how large the map is. He is, however, ahead enough, he's safe enough because Innovation has thrown enough of an army away so that he can take his third base very fast. That's how he chooses to uh, be greedy against Innovation's opener and take advantage of what is go like how much damage has been dealt, which is essentially zero. A little bit of miscontrol, not being able to kill that medevac before the marines come up, losing a couple probes because of that. And also losing additional mining time as well that he didn't need to lose. But other than that, he also made a warp prism, which is going across the map now. As a result, because of this factory opener, you delay stim for a very long time. Stim has just started now, and it's the 1020 mark. Innovation got a third command center. He got it before Stim, so that's how fast he, uh, that's how greedy he's being. But it's because those medevac drops were able to scout his uh, super or Hurricane's entire base, and he knew that Hurricane wasn't doing a fast two base colossal, and he also went right over the third base. So Innovation's feeling a little bit safe right now. However, Hurricane does this very nice attack with the Warp Prism and Blink Stalkers. I really like this by him. I'm not quite... I think this is uh, an innovative part of his play. He didn't have it specifically in mind. But it does do a lot of damage. He ends up killing about 25 SCVs. This Warpin is very nice. Now, something I want to note here is that this is the units count before the fight. Like, the fight's just begun. Innovation has 54 SCVs and Hurricane has 49 probes. Now, unfortunately, we can't see the Chrono Boost saved up. Would love to see that and to see if Hurricane's producing or chronoing out his gateways or if he's not chronoing at all. I imagine he wasn't chronoing anything at all because he has that third base. So he doesn't want to commit too heavily to this attack. He just wants to do some damage. It's by no means an all in. An innovation just lost about God knows how many workers right there. Hurricane's still at 49 workers right now. It's an important thing to note. And he's making one probe at a time. He has plus one weapons going on right now. He has plenty of money. He's not supply blocked. And his third base is done. Which begs us to, a to uh, ask the question, what exactly is he doing right now? And there we go again. One probe being made on the production tab. Instead of three, it's just one. Now this is very, very huge because it takes about it takes about 11 seconds to chrono out a probe and when you're making one probe from multiple rounds in this case I counted two production rounds that he only made he was literally only making one probe he could have been up six to seven workers he could have almost had his third base saturated at this point however it's not and he's only at 50 workers now, although Innovation has lost a decent amount of SCVs, he's by no means out of this game. He has the third Orbital Command Center, so he's working with three mules right here. And oh, this attack as well. Sorry I keep pausing, but uh, it's important to break down different things that's happening here. 
So the stalker count was originally at 15. He loses a couple immediately blinking up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There are 10 stalkers over here. Uh, two more go down, so now there's 8. There's 7. And he escapes with 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 6. So he lost about 4 stalkers there. It's about a production round worth of, like an entire gateway cycle of units. Which is a pretty big deal at this stage of the game when you don't have a very big infrastructure to replenish this army. Now, the cool thing that Innovation does here is that as soon as Hurricane blinks down, Innovation knows that Hurricane is not going to have blink ready for a little, couple more seconds. And in that case, or in, in that time period, he's able to kill two more additional stalkers. So he's killed about two production rounds worth of gateway units of these stalkers which is a pretty fine retribution for getting 25 SCVs worth. And that's and he kills another one right there. Stalkers are not cheap units. They're even more expensive than Marauders. They're 125 or 150 minerals and 50 gas. So losing Stalkers like that is by no means cost efficient unless you're doing a lot, a lot, a lot of damage. And so Innovation lost a lot of workers, but He's still fine because of the third command center. Because he did take a big chunk of army out of uh, Hurricane's army. So the next phase or the next timing that Hurricane wants to hit, since his third base was faster, and he does have an economic advantage, not as big because he stopped probe production to micro those blink stalkers in Innovation's main base. Uh, but his next timing that he wants to hit is a maxed out timing. He's also building an additional war prism he's going to send across the map. They do a multi-pronged attack. And it could have hit a lot faster, like 20 to 30 seconds faster, if he was able to keep those stalkers alive. Though that Losing those stalkers was not cost efficient for him and only helped innovation. It did nothing to help Hurricane. It was an overextension. Now what we see here is innovation. Talking about overextensions, by the way, he's in no he's in no uh, position to fight. What ends up happening though is he prov he uh, produces this kind of pressure and kind of like a fake out to Hurricane. And he's not he's not planning on engaging here. Instead, he just wants to show his army. He forces out the photon overcharge, which I think is completely unnecessary. And he's just able to know that Hurricane is in a defensive positioning. Hurricane might have even... If Hurricane had those additional stalkers left over and still alive, he probably would have been able to punish Innovation doing that, but not today. And what I like about Innovation is that he leaves part of his army in the middle of the map. It's... Like, he's in a defensive positioning as well, but he's leaving part of his army walking around the map, looking for stuff, leaving that marine over there, taking the watchtower. He's being very proactive with his army, even when he's uh, simply waiting to hit maxed out point. He's uh, going into very standard late game, adding the Ghost Academy, the additional three barracks. As he has 2-2 two -two on the way. Everything is just a bit later, though, because of all that damage he took. Hurricane, uh, he still has a pretty good economic advantage, and he's he's solidifying that even further by taking a fourth base very fast. And this might be on purpose, this might not have been on purpose, but I like that he went up to a lot of uh, probes, because taking a fourth base this early on in the game means that your main base is still going to be mining, so that you can afford, if you should go up past 70 probes. 75-ish is a good number of four bases. On four ba on four bases this early, I should say. Oh my god, those High Templars. Oh my god, those High Templars. A big, big thing that helped Innovation come back into this game is that Hurricane's control wasn't as great as it should have been. And I think this has to do with the fact that he's very nervous and there's no reason not to be nervous against a player like Innovation. But we see a lot of small mistakes coming up in these next few engagements, which allows Innovation to 
turn the tide of battle in his favor. This looks like a scary army by Hurricane right now. He's at 180 supply, innovation at 185. So Hurricane's army is a bit small because he has some more probes than innovation does. He also has the warp prism out on the map with four, two to four zealots in it already. So that's another f at least five supply that's not part of this army. So he's down by at least 15 army supply right now. With th like this main army does not have 15 army supply in it. He also most likely has some defensive high templars slash zealots warped in anywhere on one. Oh. That was weird. All right. Uh, well, what was it? Oh yeah. So my basically my point was Hurricane's army is not as big as the supplies indicate, based off of several factors. Now Hurricane should know this as well. I think he gets a bit greedy here, trying to go for the kill. He's not killing too many SCVs, and he warp. Okay, he warps in another six zealots here, and there were four in the warp prism, so that's a total of six supply army supply. It's not being accounted for. And he warps in another six zealots here. He has a total of 10 gateways right now. He's also going to be even in upgrades. That's 3-3 three, three starting, and Innovations 2-2 two, two is just about to finish as well. So they're going to be even on upgrades in this fight. These six zealots do absolutely nothing except draw Innovations army away a little bit. And then now Hurricane is again sacking four additional zealots. That might not seem like a lot, but when you have six zealots... Four zealots in the third, four zealots in the natural, and six freaking zealots in the main. That is how many? That is 14 zealots out of the total of 18 that he has right here. So he has five. He's like six zealots here. He has a very small stalker count. It might not even be enough to one-shot Vikings, Marauders, or Ghosts. And he has four Colossi. So he has a very large amount of splash damage here, but he has no actual, he has no actual meat shield to protect that splash damage. As we see here, uh, sloppy control by Hurricane, storming the Vikings, not using the Stalkers. He wasted his blink, uh, trying to blink in place and trying to get some Vikings, but that didn't work out. And his Stalkers, for the most part, he doesn't have enough to kill all of these Vikings. He warps in Zealots. He tries to. He sent. He does like a force field here. That's really weird. That hurts him a lot more because there's only a small part of Innovation's army over here on this side. So this force field is actually forcing his zealots that he just warped in to go a long way across and do some good damage. He doesn't have enough stalkers to deal with the vikings, so these colossi are getting shot down very fast. And these stalkers are just uh, not doing as much as they should right now. Another panic force field goes down. And that's a very clear indication that Hurricane is nervous. Having like That's just a completely random, completely irrelevant force field to everything else that was going on right now. It was, he's better off saving that energy. However, Hurricane is on four bases right now, so he does still have an economic advantage, although Innovation now has a trump card, one of the few trump cards in his hands to win the game, and that is having a superior army than his opponent. 40 supply up. It might seem like a lot, but you have to remember on larger maps, it takes a very long time to reinforce your army. So although this might have been a win with closer rallying points on a smaller map, on a large map such as cross positions, dead wing, like if there were horizontal or vertical positions, this probably would have been game right here. But since it's cross positions, innovation's entire, like it takes a very long time for his reinforcements to get over here. So this army is by itself for at least at least one production round in which Hurricane has the chance to warp in additional units. Now Innovation is still fighting here. This is a slight overextension by him. A good thing that it does though is that it forces a lot of Archons to be made when uh, Hurricane... Throughout the entire game he wanted to stay mostly on High Templars. He wasn't the Archon, Archon kind of person. I'll get to that in a little bit though knowing the difference between when to make Archons and when to make High Templars. But it's safe to say that killing that fourth base, and now Innovation's fourth base is almost done for himself, so he's pretty much reset the game. And by advancing into the later stages of this macro game, he's able to uh, do good stuff, do good plays, to get him back into the game. Like, he's back in this game. That was a small overextension by him. Hurricane has two upgrade advantage at 3-3 versus Innovation's 2-2, but Innovation 
is going to have an economic advantage soon. And he has the army composition advantage as well. So from having nothing, being ahead by nothing, to now having advantages is how innovation is slowly clawing himself back into this game. Another interesting thing uh, that innovation is doing here is that uh, the goal, okay, so I'm going to pause it a little bit right here so I can explain what his army composition, the goal of it is, like, Hurricane has a bunch of high Templars, and Innovation's response is to make pure bio units. Now, one of the reasons for this, and it's probably the biggest reason, I'm wondering if he's making more barracks as well, maybe, like, two more, but the reason why he has no ghosts, whereas Hurricane has six high Templar, is he uh, is planning on doing some drop harass he is not maxed out. Those are the two big points why you don't need ghosts right now. Uh, ghosts cost two supply and they're pretty slow to make as well. So like it take it takes a while to make two supply worth of ghosts, which is just one ghost. So the idea here is to produce bio units and utilize them while waiting for the ghosts. Like uh, produce the ghosts at like 190 supply, produce five of them at a time, or when you're closer to being maxed to add to your army composition as the final kind of spin of the kind of units you want. And during that time, Innovation decides to apply pressure with this very large bioforce that he's built up. He can by no means head-on engage Hurricane's army, but what he can do is split it apart, try to do some multi-pronged harass, and allow him to establish a fifth base because his main and his natural are about to be mined out and to uh, create a stronger unit composition and get some more ghosts out. What he does here is he sends these three dropships over and Hurricane sees this. It's not that big of a deal that he sees this. The important thing is that this is drawing Hurricane's entire army to these three dropships. So those three dropships don't even have to do anything. He has to do zero damage and he will. St those drops will still have been worth it because now it forces Hurricane's army to be on this side of the map. Like Innovation's army is split up into two groups right now, a third at home. And Hurricane, he doesn't have enough time to walk across the map and actually do any damage. And although these drops do, it's safe to say that they were pretty bad drops. They did almost no damage. They picked off that Colossi right there. They stopped a little bit of mining time, but that's pretty much all they did for about four medevacs worth of units. Oh, I guess two Colossi for about four medevacs worth of units. And we see that reflected in Innovation Supply. He's now down in Army Supply. Uh, Hurricane is starting a fifth base of his own because his main and natural are about to be mined out as well. And we see Innovation just continually producing bio units. He doesn't have, like, having a couple ghosts, well, first of all, he cannot afford ghosts. Second of all, having a couple ghosts, ghosts are very immobile compared to bio units, and they're not going to make a difference in this fight. There is not enough Archons, there's only three Archons to warrant the usage of ghosts, and there's not a high enough economy slash ghost count to you to utilize single snipings of the High Templar. So EMP is not going to be as effective as maxing out bio units and Vikings to deal with the splash damage. If you can deal with the Colossi, then you can pretty much the Templar don't become as scary. You need a combination of both of them to create a Protoss death, a very scary Protoss death ball, I should say. This uh. Warp in right here, uh, two, four, six more zealots warped in here. They kill a tech lab. So for the cost of warping in six zealots, uh, Hurricane kills a tech lab. Not a very good use of his money, not cost efficient at all. All it's doing is sending a little bit of Innovation's army back to defend against those six zealots, which are easily cleaned up. We see the fourth go down, Innovation snipes it off. The reason why he was making more bio units was because he knew he was going to end up losing some more. And his economy still isn't good enough to produce like five ghosts at a time. That's a whopping thousand minerals, 500 gas. Hurricane's economy, on the other hand, is very, very good. He probably needed to build additional gateways. He's only at 10, and he stays at 10 for the rest of the game, so he has, pro he has cash flow problems. And we see that reflected in the fact that he cannot make a very good unit composition. These Vikings, they're getting stormed, but when you notice 
what happens in this fight, the only reason, the only way that the Vikings are actually taking damage is the High Templar storming them. Hurricane is making a big mistake by not having the Stalkers in a forward position to blink on top and snipe the Vikings. He also doesn't have a large enough number to snipe off uh, multiple Vikings at once and be a threat. And Stalker count is just very small overall, which is going to allow Innovation to do stuff like this, uh, send small units forward to snipe High Templar. If he had enough Stalkers, like 10 Stalkers, those units wouldn't have been able to do any damage. These Vikings also wouldn't have been able to go ahead. And now Hurricane finally blinks his Stalkers forward, but there's simply not enough Stalkers to actually deal with the Vikings at hand. And so that was a army composition problem by Hurricane. He loses two more High Templar for free. Those two more storms that aren't going to happen. And although Innovation trades Vikings for Colossi, and Hurricane stalls a very large army, it can no longer be chased down. Another problem with High Templar is that they're not good at chasing bio units. That was a very good storm there. But if Innovation is kiting and running away, for the most part, Hurricane is not going to get a good engagement off. Like. Unless the army is cornered and you have nowhere to run. Those High Templars are not very good offensively and more for defensive purposes. Now the Archons on the other hand, they're very fast moving units compared to the High Templar. And they add a lot of uh, tanking ability to your army. So if Hurricane had a lot of Archons right now and very few High Templar, he would have been able to chase this army back. And if he had a couple of uh, reinforcing pylons available and more gateways to spend his money, he would definitely be able to win the game right now. But that is not the case. Uh, I paused it here because uh, Innovation has split off his army into two portions. We see one over here. It's that part over there. And then we see another clump over here. And it's going to be on this side of the screen. He splits off four Marauders. He sends them forward ahead of the other bio army that is waiting in surprise. And Hurricane does not see this. He only sees the four Marauders coming, and he's like, Oh, you have four Marauders, lol, you have no units. So now, I'm going to storm you, I'm going to feedback your Metavacs, boom, 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 four feedbacks, and is immediately after he expends all of his energy, which was a bad idea, These this huge Bioforce comes in for the flank, and now Hurricane no longer has an army. He has two more storms, which don't do anything. He, his, uh, he doesn't have a reinforcing pylon, so his reinforcements are coming late to the fight, and as a result, he's losing these very uh, unprotected, <clears throat> valuable Archons. He lost four. He's going to lose all of them, I believe. Yeah, so he lost five Archons because he didn't have a reinforcing pylon. He used feedbacks on the medevacs instead of additional storms, and he didn't see... Like, that was a very good flank by Innovation, and only sending a part of it forward to... Uh, to kind of throw, it threw Hurricane off, but it was just designed to snipe some High Templar. That's all it was to do. But Hurricane underestimated Invasion's army, and he boost, he like blew all of his spells too early into the fight. And as a result, Innovation was able to pick off five free Archons in return. I think Hurricane still would have been able to do okay in that engagement if he had a reinforcing pylon available and additional gateways. He could warp in a bunch of charge lots and stalkers. And again, he only has like four stalkers right now. His his unit composition is very low on stalkers, very heavy on high templars and colossi. And when you do that, ghosts become a lot easier to or a lot better at sniping units. Vikings also become a lot better at sniping colossi as well. There's simply just not a big enough meat shield over here for Hurricane to defend against that army. And he's being forced to use these uh, very expensive splash damage utilities to very little effectiveness. And now Innovation, uh, he's now abusing the High Templar immobility by dropping in these double places. And this is where things just fall apart. Innovation hasn't really taken a direct engagement versus Hurricane since that fight where Hurricane overextended and didn't see part of Innovation's army and Innovation was able to pick off five Archons, that's such that's such a big deal. But for the most part, Innovation, he now splits his units up into two different loca two different groups again. This is probably the third or fourth time this game that he's done it. And this is a good reason too, because on big maps such as Deadwing, uh, splitting up your units and abusing the how big the map is and using mobility to your advantage 
can really create a strong a strong game plan on bigger sized maps. Like this, this strategy would work pretty well on uh, Inferno pools because of how large that map is, especially on like a cross positions kind of setting. Anyways, now Innovation is finally maxed out. He still only has bio units, but at this point in the game, he knows that Hurricane doesn't really have much left because he sniped off multiple bases. He has bases of his own. He's still making units. He's seeing that Hurricane's army isn't as big as it should have, partly because of macro problems, partly because of throwing away a lot of units, partly because of the good, excellent pickoffs that Innovation was able to create. And that's pretty much what makes the difference between being like only 10 supply up and being like 30 to 40 supply up is, is, is having as many of these small advantages pile up through a macro game as possible. GG is called and Innovation ends up winning the game. It's very nice to see. Like that was a very good comeback by Innovation. And it just re it's it's a very strong strong uh evidence that by like the example of playing a macro game, like just play macro and you'll beat people. Even like you'll beat people that maybe not are better than you, but like if you're the better player, you should win with macro. And that has proved very well here, because the longer the game goes, the s smaller the disadvantages that you had in the early to mid stages of the game. This that's they get very small. Like killing twenty five SCVs. In the first 10 minutes is huge, but killing 25 SCVs in the first like 30 minutes of a game isn't nearly as big. And so you can neutralize dis you can neutralize being behind by taking the game into a macro game and going into the later stages of the game. That's what innovation did, and that's what he was able and that's why he was able to accomplish the win over Hurricane. So that pretty much brings an end to this video. My throat is like parched right now. A uh, couple announcements, I guess. I guess just this one. <laughs> I am trying to, for those of you interested, I am trying to s set up a regular stream in Monday evenings from 7 to 9 p.m. Maybe sometimes earlier, sometimes later. It depends what's going on. I usually, I'm going to try to like do a better job at tweeting like when I'm streaming and if there's any complications that happen. So follow me on Twitter to get stream updates, but for the most part, just once a week on Mondays in the evenings is when I'll be streaming, and I'll be streaming uh, macro builds from like GSL and from Pro League, so if you guys want to just stop by, say hi, and come enjoy like watching the builds being done from a first person point of view, yeah, Monday nights, be there, be square. Alright, peace out guys, I'll see you in the next video. Hope you enjoyed this one. Bye.